The Radium Girls, as they were called, met tragic fates after taking on factory work. They painted watch dials with a thin brush, and the radium paint caused the dials to glow in the dark. At the time, radium was considered safe, and they were consistently told that their work was perfectly safe. The girls were needed because their small hands allowed them to carry out the delicate task. To paint the numbers, they used a special technique. After each number was painted with radium, they put the brush tip between their lips to compress it, allowing them to apply the material precisely for the next number. A girl could paint up to 200 watch dials in a single shift, and during the painting process, they absorbed a significant amount of radium into their bodies. It's hard to understand today how a radioactive substance could have seemed safe back then. However, many people were quick to capitalize on this new discovery. Radium was used in drinkable products, toothpaste, bath salts and foods. Radium was initially thought to be harmless because its half-life is fast. Perhaps the wildest idea of them all was William A. Bailey's radium-infused paper, which was meant to be attached to testicles to increase fertility. Unfortunately, the inventor believed in his creation, used the paper sheets himself, and eventually died from cancer. In this context, it's no wonder the radium girls worked carefree. They enjoyed the glow so much that they tried to take advantage of it. They wore their best clothes to work, which would be covered in radium, making them irresistible while dancing at night. They even painted their teeth with the substance, causing their smiles to glow as well. Their skin was exposed to the radium, and they inhaled the radium-laden paint. It's no wonder that the effects of radium exposure soon became apparent in their bodies. Radium turned out to be far from harmless. It was, in fact, very dangerous, especially with continuous exposure. Marie Curie and other scientists experimenting with the substance also died from exposure. It wasn't long before the radium girls began to experience its effects. Amelia Maggia was among the first to feel the consequences. She experienced toothaches, leading to multiple extractions, but the extraction sites never healed and turned into ulcers. Eventually, the woman's entire lower jaw had to be removed, and finally, the girl nicknamed Molly bled to death. Doctors didn't understand what had happened and incorrectly attributed her death to syphilis. Over the next two years, more girls experienced the same symptoms. The Radium Luminous Materials Corp which operated the factory, denied any connection between the work and the health issues. However, by 1925, pathologist Harrison Martland confirmed that radium exposure was causing the girls' bodies to disintegrate from the inside. Despite this evidence, the factory continued to deny responsibility. The radium girls, knowing their days were numbered, sought legal representation. Many settled out of court, using the compensation for their own funerals. Catherine Wolfe Donahue was the first to win a lawsuit in 1938, but by then, many more women had fallen ill due to the hazardous work. Among the fortunate few was May Keane, who only worked in the dangerous factory for a few days. She didn't like the taste of the paint and refused to put the brush in her mouth. After a few days, her supervisor asked her if she wanted to continue working with them, as it was evident she did not enjoy her job. May gladly resigned, and although she struggled with poor teeth, chronic migraines, and battled cancer twice, she lived to be 107 years old, passing away in 2014. May expressed gratitude to her supervisor for asking the question, she regretted never going back to thank him for saving her from certain death. The tragic fate of the Radium Girls, and their fight, although initially seeming hopeless, was actually of great significance. If they hadn't stood up for themselves in this way, 
workplace safety regulations might not be as strict as they have become. Their struggle and sacrifices helped to pave the way for better worker protections and awareness of the dangers associated with handling radioactive materials. Today, we can look back on their story as a reminder of the importance of workplace safety and the ongoing need for vigilance in ensuring that all workers are protected from harm. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new uploads. We appreciate your support and hope to see you again soon.